Hi boys and girls, it's Mr. Wassman, and today we are once again looking at fractions. In particular, today we are analyzing tenths of a whole. We are in our math journals on page 89. It's lesson uh, 8 of unit 3. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. So in the first row of problems, you see a fraction circle. And parts of the circle are uh, shaded in to represent fraction. So if you look at number one, you'll see that there are ten parts total, and eight of the ten parts are uh, shaded in. So as a fraction, I would write that as eight over ten. Eight tenths. Okay. Now, decimals are just another way to numerically represent a fractional amount. Uh, it's a fancy way of saying uh, I can write out a fraction uh, in number form without using the little line system that we see here and numerators and denominators. So 8 tenths is less than one whole, so I would write 1 like this, 1 1.0, okay? When you have less than 1, everything that is fractional or less than a whole would be on the right side of that decimal. So if I have 8 parts out of a total of 10 parts, um, I would represent that as 0 0.8. That's how I would represent this amount of 8 tenths in decimal form. These two uh, iterations are the same value. Okay. So if I take a look at problem number 2, I see that 5 out of the 10 parts are shaded in. So again, 5 tenths would be represented like this as a fraction. 5 over 10. 5, once again, talks about the number of parts shaded. And the 10 talks about the total number of parts. Now again, as a decimal, when I draw that little dot, I put a 0 in front, we are... Uh, committing to the idea that we are always talking about parts out of 10, okay? So 5 tenths would be represented as 0.5, okay? But then we get to a problem like number 3. This fraction shows us 3 parts out of 5, 3 fifths. Now 3 fifths is not out of 10. But this is where we use our understanding of equivalent fractions. And I know that uh, 10 is a multiple of 5, because 5 times 2 gives me 10. So before I could create the decimal version of this fraction, I would need to first convert it uh, into a, an equivalent fraction out of 10. So if 5 times 2 is 10, I would multiply 3 times 2 and that would make 6 tenths, okay? And I know that to be true because if I were to split each one of my fifths in half, I get tenths, okay? So when I look at that picture again, I see my crudely drawn 6 tenths, okay? So again, written as a decimal, it would look like this, 0 0.6, okay? So again, when I think about decimals, all I'm doing is representing tenths of a whole in a different way, okay? The second row of problems asks us to color in uh, the parts first and then show the fraction, okay? So thinking in reverse. So 0 0.1 is another way of saying one-tenth. And then I would just shade in one of the ten parts, like so. I think you can do the other two problems pretty easily. Okay? Now let's take a look at the uh, last set of problems. These are uh, inequality statements, uh, mostly because you're going to use a, a greater than or less than symbol to uh, show the relationship. 
Now, when looking at them side by side, uh, you got to compare two things. What's to the left-hand side of the decimal, and what's to the right-hand side of the decimal? Just like numerators and denominators help us understand equivalency, uh, we have to look at, is there anything in the ones place value to compare versus is there anything in the tenths place value to compare? So, 0 0.2 compared to 0 0.9. Uh, if I've got a 0 in both places on the left-hand side of the decimal, then I'm only looking at the digit on the right of the decimal. So 2 is definitely smaller than 9. So 0 0.2 is smaller or less than 0 0.9. Okay. Same thing here with the second one. 0 0.7 is greater than 0 0.6 because 7 tenths is more than 6 tenths. Now, when you get to a problem like, say, number 10, you are given two sets of digits to compare, the digits on the left uh, side of the decimal and the digits on the right. Okay, So I'm going to always go to the left-hand side first or start reading the number from left to, to right. So when I look at this digit, 3, and compared to this digit, 1, I know that 3 is more than 1. So 3.2 would be bigger than 1.8, even though the 8 tenths part of 1.8 has a larger digit in the, in the tenths place value. Okay? So if I were to represent this as a fraction or a model, just so that you can compare, if I had 3.2, uh, I would have one, two, three whole circles, okay, okay. and then and a fourth, fourth circle, circle that would that be, be split, split up, up in the tenths. tenths. So I would cut up the circle into ten slices. One, two, three, four, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Okay. So then I would have two tenths of uh, a fourth circle, like so. That's my tenths part. And then the other three circles would be completely filled in because they represent the whole. Okay. So three holes and two tenths. That's compared to 1.8, which would only be one circle shaded in, and then a second circle. Well, that turned out to be pink, but that's okay. And again, split up into 10 parts. Yikes, my drawing isn't the greatest, but, you know, you get the gist. Um, all but two of those parts would be red. Like so. So that would be my very crude drawing of eight-tenths. Okay. So that's why this number 3.2 would be bigger than 1.8. Okay? If you have any questions on making comparisons with decimals or converting fractions into decimals or the other way around, please ask your math teacher for help. Otherwise, we will talk again soon. Thanks, friends.